Greetings again today in the name of Jesus Christ, our wonderful Lord and Savior. Glad to see you here in the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church today. We welcome every one of you. We do have a few visitors. We're glad you're here. Always glad to have visitors to come and be with us here at Northside on the Lord's Day. And you that's listening out in the radio listening audience, we most certainly appreciate you tuning in to Northside Baptist Church Hour that's coming to you live right from the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church here in Athens, Georgia. Now this is Preacher Edward speaking. We're hoping during the hour coming up we can be a real inspiration to everyone. Now remember the singing and the, of course, the music and the message today will be on tape number uh, 323. Tape number 323. I've been bringing a series of messages pertaining to the home. I bring the final one in the series today, which has to do with parents and their children, the children and their parents. And I hope it will be helpful as we take a look at the Word of God. Now, we want you children, you young people, to give us your undivided attention and hear what we have to say today because this can help you very much, even lengthen your life on the earth as we see from the Word of God. Now, you may turn in your Bible, will you please, to a place in the a book of Psalms. I want to read a verse found there first of all, then we go back to Ephesians. I want you to turn to the book of Psalms. And let's see, I'll give you the page number in just a moment and see what God has to say here in the Scriptures. You may turn to the book of Psalms, uh, chapter... Brother, book, the book of Psalms, that's right, the book of Psalms, I want to read in just one moment when I get the place all lined up here in my message. I have Proverbs, I have uh, Psalms, and uh, uh, you turn to the book of Proverbs first of all, will you please? And let's take a look at the book of Proverbs chapter 4, and it's page 674, I think we got it straightened out now, page 674. In the book of Proverbs, instead of the book of Psalms, I want to read uh, verse 10, and then I want to read a verse of Scripture in the New Testament that almost tells you the same thing, maybe some two or three verses there. But in Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 10, Hear, O my son, and receive my saying, and the years of thy life shall be many. Now let that sink in for just a moment, will you please? While you're letting that sink in, I want to say that if you want to write in and get this tape today or any other tape I have on the home, uh, tape number 319 was termites in the home, tape number 320 had to do with the marriage and divorce situation, and tape number 321 had to do with the husband's place in the home, and then tape number two or 322 had to do with the wife's Responsibility, tape number 323 is the one today, of course, has to do with the fathers, mothers and children, and the children and their fathers, so you keep this in mind. But remember, he tells us here in Proverbs 4, he said, Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. Do you want to live a long time on the earth, young people? Uh, take heed to God's Word, what God said in the blessed book. There's a lot of young people today in the graveyard because they failed to obey their parents. Now turn, will you please, to the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, Ephesians chapter 5. And I want to read the first three verses. Correction, please, number 6. Ephesians number 6. Seems like I'm having problems getting my scriptures straightened out this morning. Ephesians number uh, 6, verses 1, 2, 3. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. Now look at verse uh, uh, 3. That it may be well with thee, that thou mayest live long on the earth. Now the Bible said, if you want to live long on the earth, then obey your parents in the Lord. Now God told the, the children of Israel, if they want to live a long time in the land where he sent them, then they... Be obedience to the parents. We go over in the New Testament where the Holy Spirit through Paul says, if you want to live a long time on the earth, then obey your parents in the Lord. And that's very, very important because we're living in a day when so many children 
are disobedient to their parents and they get into serious trouble because of it. And you need to realize that if you want to stay out of trouble, you want to live a long time, you want to have good health and blessings of God, then obey your parents in the Lord. God has never changed that command. That runs all the way through the Bible. Children, obey your parents. Now we have many young people a day that are killed on the highways. Many young people on alcohol don't dope because they fail to obey their parents and got into trouble. Many of a child today, a young person sent his mother or his dad to a premature grave because of their routish living and disobedience. I know a young man that wanted the automobile one night and his parents said, son, you've had the automobile uh, last, you had it last night and, and you don't need the automobile tonight. We're in a revival meeting in our church and we want you to go to the meeting. He said, no, I'm not going to the meeting. I want the car. They said, you can't get it tonight. We want you to stay at home tonight. He said, well, I'm not going to, meeting, to the meeting. So he uh, pretended he was going to stay at home. And so mother and dad went on to the meeting. They lived very near the church. And, and then after they left, he went out and rewired the switch on the car, cranked the automobile, came to Athens, got with the wrong crowd, and began to drink. And after living several hours in Routis Living, he decided to go back home, and he got in his automobile and started back home. And a preacher friend and myself happened to be attending the meeting that night in this particular church. We were coming down the highway, and we saw a car flip over. And we hastened to the place, and lo and behold, there lay this young boy out in the highway. The car had he had thrown out of his automobile. He's driving too fast. He was about drunk. And he was bleeding at the mouth and nose and bleeding at the head. And, and this preacher friend of mine said, Brother Edwards, the man is dying. The boy is dying. We flagged other cars down, asked him to get an ambulance. They went to call an ambulance. And this preacher said, Brother Edwards, I never did like to see anybody die with his shoes on. I'm going to slip the boy's shoes off. I said, go right ahead, sir. And he took the boy's shoes off and the boy died. What are you saying, Preacher Edwards? I'm saying that boy had obeyed his mother and daddy. He had probably been living today. But because of disobedience, he wouldn't do what they told him to do. And he was kind of a wild type boy. And he was going to get that automobile. If he had to rewind and drive it. And he did. And he died in a drunken condition. It's a terrible thing, beloved, whenever children are so disobedient to parents. Until they shorten their days upon the earth. Now we thank God for our precious children. Jesus said, suffer little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. Jesus loved little children and our children. I can't understand why, why any mother or dad would walk off and leave their precious little children to go along maybe in an evil world and not love them. Now you ought to love your children. They're precious. God gave them to you. And they're very precious and you ought to love them and let them know you love them. You can't love them too much unless you love them to the extent that you spoil them. You shouldn't do that. That's a certain limit is the way you manifest your love toward that child. You can't be so levy dubby until uh, you spoil the child and that's real bad. God said don't spoil that child. You can very easily spoil the child if you're not careful. And the word of God plainly tells us in Proverbs chapter 13... I want you to take your Bible and turn there because you need this verse of Scripture. Proverbs chapter 13, page 681 in the original Schofield Reference Bible. That's Proverbs chapter 13, page 681 in the original Schofield Reference Bible. Now take a look at that verse of Scripture. I'm going to read it and then I'm going to reread it. And I want you to read it with me. I mean so I can hear you read it. I want you to hear, I want you to read this verse of Scripture. I want to hear you read this verse of scripture. And let me read it first of all. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 24. He that spareth his rod hateth his son. But he that loveth him chasteth him betimes. Now what is God saying here? God is saying that if you claim that you love your child so much you can't whip that child. You have the wrong kind of love. You're dead wrong. God said if you love that child, then you'll chasten that child, you'll whip that child if he needs a whipping. 
Now you read it with me, will you please? Proverbs chapter 13, verse 24. Come on, let's read it. He that spareth his rod hateth his son, but he that loveth him chasteth him be times. I didn't hear you. Come on, let's read it again. He that spareth his rod hateth his son, but he that loveth him chasteth him be times. Don't ever say you love your child so much you can't chasten that child. Because if you do, you send something contrary to the teaching of the Word of God, you better check up on your love. It may be a very selfish love that will cause your child to give you much trouble and heartache in days that lie ahead. I know a man today, he's supposed to be a preacher, and he made a statement in the pulpit one time. He had an adopted son, and he said, I never, my daddy never whipped me. I never received a whipping from my daddy, and therefore... I made up my mind when we adopted our boy that we'd never whip him. I'm never going to whip that boy. That boy sat out in that audience and heard his dad make that statement more times than one. A few years later when the boy uh, became a teenager, you know where he was on Sunday night what his dad is trying to preach in the church? Sitting at home looking at TV. You know where is that later on in years? Breaking out people's windows and breaking out car door or glasses on automobiles and things of that type. His daddy said, I did, I'm not going to ever whip that boy. Now you listen to me. You're doing wrong if you fail to chasten your child. Now I don't believe in child abusement. I believe you ought to be considerate. I don't think you ought to be unmerciful. But you know and you're intelligent enough to know just what kind of spanking or whipping you ought to give that child. And you may say, now preach, Edwards, when should we start whipping the child? Well, maybe about to wait about six weeks but with a little girl, but maybe the boy about all starts the day is born. Now, you need to realize that the Bible plainly says that they come here telling lies. Oh, you say, preach, Edwards, you mean a little child is born telling lies? That's what the Bible said. I'll prove it to you. Many times you've seen a little child whenever long about midnight starts screaming and kicking and and uh, then the mother jumps up to go in to see about it. And, and as soon as she turns the light on, it starts laughing and good. Now, you know what it did? It wanted the light turned on. Played a little hypocrite. It lied, didn't it? It wasn't, it stopped, it wasn't hurting. Mother said, it's got the colic. Something wrong with my baby. Let me go check. And when she turns the light on, everything is wonderful. Now, that's the way they start telling lies when they're born. The Bible said we conceived and Nick were born in sin. And I don't care how small the child may be, they soon learn to pull those tricks. Now you need to realize that. And those children learn and realize what they can get away with much earlier than you think they do. A little child two and three years old will begin to test its mother and dad to see exactly what it can get away with. And every time it gets away with something, it's going to try that again and even get away with more. Now you need to realize that. That child will test you and they know more about what to do when doing right or wrong than you think they do. And many times a little whipping or spanking will take care of that situation. Woe be unto the child that's never chastened by its parents. Something wrong somewhere. You'd very easily spoil your child. You'd very easily let your child have everything it wants until when it grows up it thinks it can get everything it wants regardless of who it hurts. Oftentimes I go into homes and I, you can't walk for the toys. May have one child, two, maybe more, but uh, you just can't. You've got so many toys in the room until you can't walk around. Now what's wrong? What's, what's happened there? Those parents don't realize that they're making a very selfish child out of that little fellow. If he only had one toy, he'd appreciate that more than he would a room full. He has so many until he doesn't know which one he wants. And he wants everyone that he sees and hears about. And mother and dad are trough off and buy it for him just because he wants it. Now you listen to me. You absolutely can't buy your child every toy he wants and give him everything he wants. If you do, you're ruining that child. You absolutely ruin him and sooner or later they may have to correct him in the penitentiary. That may be where he'll get his correction. Now beloved, listen. Tell your child that he can't have it and, and let him know he can't have it and get him just what you think he needs or should have and not go out and spend half of your salary on buying him everything he wants because as he grow older, he's going to keep demanding that 
and demanded that, and he may have to find his correction somewhere in the penitentiary. One toy, two toys, would pre the child appreciated far more than a room for where you couldn't walk without falling over. Now you need to realize that lest you spoil your child. I've seen people, whenever the child do wrong, they say, now, uh, Mama don't like you to do that. Mama, Mama's going to tell Daddy, and, uh, and on and on, M Mama's going to tell Daddy, or Daddy say, don't do that, son, or you stop doing that. And then the young'un knows his Daddy's not going to whip him, and he knows Mother's not going to whip him, so he'll keep on doing what he wants to do. Now I've seen mothers and dads take their children and try to hold them, to keep them from doing what they're doing to do instead of taking them out and, and applying the uh, Board of Education to see them knowledge. Now, you the only thing you have to do about one time, you can solve that problem. If you are your child, you tell your child stop doing something, and he keeps on doing it, and you, you try to hold him to keep him from doing it, you're learning that child. You need a spanking yourself. I don't care if you're 90 years old. But a lot of people don't know how to raise children, don't know how to care for them. And they do those things and they spoil that child. They ruin that child by not telling that child, now you can't do that. And if he does it again, take him out. Give him a whipping. And I guarantee you he'll soon stop doing that. But if you don't do that, you're going to have to keep telling him, don't you do it now, Mama, don't you do that. Daddy know Daddy loves you and Daddy doesn't want you to do that and, and let them go on and do it. And they'll do it anyway. You know why? They know you won't do a thing about it. In a case like that, the really the ones that needs a whipping would be the mother and dad. But they are grown, you couldn't very well whip them. But they need to correct that child. Then I've known people today, bless your heart, I've seen mothers, I can name a couple today. A mother would sit all day long with her child in her lap, wear herself out rather than to let that child cry. Now listen, crying won't hurt a baby. It'll make his lungs strong. Do it good. It ought to cry once in a while. A baby never cries. You better check up on that baby. They come here crying, many of them. And you need to let them squall once in a while, cry or whatever you want to call it. It'll do him good. Those good old tears coming out of his eyes and, and those screams and cries will build up his little lungs. It'll help that child. But I could name two mothers today that I know I've seen in my ministry would sit up from sun up to sun down with a child in their laps rather than let that child cry. Now that's dead wrong. That mother is wearing herself out. She's spoiling that child and that's absolutely wrong. You need to love your children. Now let me get to this. There may be a few children today, a very few, that you could sit them down and you could talk to them and that would do the job. Now, if it doesn't do the job, then get your switch, get your belt, whatever it takes to get the job done. But if you can sit down and talk to them and get the job done and not have to talk yourself to death to get it done, that's all right, nothing wrong in that. I had three in my family, and there's one in my family we could talk to, and that did the job. I had two more that I had to take my belt to quite often to get the job done. I won't call their names or give their initials, but... They were uh, my three children. And so uh, you can get the job done sometimes by sitting down talking. But other times it takes more than talking. And you don't have to talk all day either to some to get the job. You just say, now you know that's wrong, honey. Don't do that no more. That says it right there. Daddy said it's wrong. Mama said it's wrong. So we just, uh, I'm just not going to do that anymore. They know what they can get by with. Several years ago, we had a young boy here in the church and his Mother and dad and family were members of this church. And um, he did something indecent in the church. Uh, several people sitting around him saw him do it. No doubt about it, he did it. They came to me in the afternoon and, uh, and told me about what happened. That little girl sitting beside of him and he uh, just uh, used his hands where he ought not be using his hands and so forth and so on. And so uh, they told me about it. And I got up that night and I said, now you listen to me. There's something that went on this morning in the church that we're not going to put up with. It's not going to happen. It's not, we're not going to tolerate that in this church. And you young people, you listen to me. You keep your hands to yourself when you're sitting beside that girl. If you want to sit beside her, keep your hands to yourself and be decent in the house of God. Well, after the service, the boy's dad came to me and he said, uh, was that my son you were talking about? 
I said, sir, I'd rather not say. Oh, he said, now if that was my boy, I'd, I'd like to know if that was my boy. I said, sir, I'd rather not say this. I'll leave it at that. I don't think it'll happen again. He said, well, I think you ought to me to tell me whether or not that was my boy. I said, yes, it was your boy, sir. That man became angry at me, went home and asked his boy about it. His boy said, no, daddy, I didn't do that. No, 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 I wouldn't do a thing like that. It wasn't me. No, it wasn't me. That boy, as far as I know, never came back to church anymore. And his dad is still angry at me today over that very thing. They're not members here now, but he never forgave me for correcting that boy in, in the, from the pulpit. And uh, he insisted I tell him that it was his son, and he believed his son instead of me. He believed his son was telling the truth, and I wasn't. And he wrecked the boy, and he's angry at me today and never forgiven me, but it's not my fault. I did what was right. And if that boy grows up and goes to hell, it won't be my fault. It'll be his daddy's fault. What are you saying, Preach Edwards? I'm saying you can't uphold your children in the meanest they do. You have a lot of parents, their children never do anything wrong. Never do anything wrong. They're so precious, they're so wonderful, and they should be to you. But they can do some things wrong. Don't ever get in your head that your children never do anything wrong. But you have some parents, their children never do anything wrong. No, no. And if you say anything to them about your child doing something wrong, you got a fight on your hands. And that's bad. Your child is a little child born into this world, a little sinner. They come here, the Bible says, Ted and lies. They grow up in sin and iniquity, and they go to do some things wrong. They're not angels. Somebody said, well, my little child is an angel. No, it's not. It's not an angel. Not by any means. It's a little human being, a little ball of sin, born in sin with that Adamic nature, and that child will be doing some things wrong. Now, don't you ever think he won't. And if you uphold your child in what he does wrong, then you got trouble. Like the man I spoke about a moment ago. He upheld his boy. He believed his boy upheld him in the wrong he did. And that, that boy, as far as I know, has never been back to church. May have, but he's not going to church now, I'm sure. And I doubt he ever went back to church anymore. And so his dad, as I said, is still angry at me about the situation. They are the losers, not me. I did exactly what I should have done. Oh, you say, preach, it was reckon you could have been wrong. That boy didn't, no, no. There's about two or three people saw exactly what he did, and I questioned the young girl, and she admitted uh, uh, what he did. So he lied about it. His dad believed him, but tried to make me out a lie. Now listen, you need to hear the Word of God, hear the man of God, and if your children do wrong, don't uphold them. If they do wrong, let them know they've done wrong. Your children know better than anybody else's children in a, in a general sense, and you need to realize that. And it's always better to correct them and be firm and, and let them know that you mean business and they just like other children, they're not angels. And they need to be saved when they reach the age of accountability. Now the Bible says, children, obey your parents in the Lord. If you want to live a long time on the earth, obey your parents. Do that which is right. There used to be a time when mothers and dads taught their children to say yes, sir, and no, sir, to their superiors. You won't find much of that today. When I find a young man today and he'll say, yes, sir, to me or no, sir, to me, I just want to reach out and hug his neck. I just want to shake his parents' hands. You don't find much of that. They say, oh, yes, no, yeah, no, no, yeah. Yeah, that's right, no. It's not yes, sir. It's not no, sir. It's not yes, ma'am. And it's not no, ma'am anymore. You do well when you train your children to respect their parents, those in authority, and teach them to say, yes, sir, and no, sir, to their parents and to uh, other adults when they're talking to them. You don't find many like that today. But when you find one that, that's been taught to have manners of that type, you have found a gem. You have, you have found a wonderful person. Because the way children are brought up today, they're not taught to respect their parents. They're not taught to respect their school teachers. They're not taught to respect their pastor, their Sunday school teacher, or the law enforcement officer. They're not taught it anymore. And that's why so many of them in prison today. And that's why so many of them on dope today. And that's why some are dying in electric chairs today. Their parents fail to train them to honor God, to know God, to love God, and to respect uh, the things of God, the house of God, and respect their superiors and honor them. 
Back when I was a boy growing up, if some jaybird got up in the classroom and tried to chase a teacher around to try to pounce on that teacher about something, he didn't come back to that school the next day. I'll tell you, when that principal got through with him, he probably had to stand up overnight. And when he got home and his parents got through with him, he probably couldn't sit down for a week, and the parents got word that the boy don't come back to school. If he can't respect these teachers and want to jump on them and fight them and cuss them and talk back to them, keep them at home. We don't, we don't need that guy. They eventually have to train him in the penitentiary. When you go to school, you need to respect your teacher. Honor your teacher and respect your teacher. Say yes, sir, and yes, ma'am to that teacher. And that teacher will appreciate that and honor that teacher. A, a gang of boys or girls will chase a teacher around in the Sunday school room to try to jump on them. Those boys ought to be thrown out of school. Now, the parents are getting mad and run down to the schoolhouse want to fight about it and want to get a, a case against them, but uh, just let them rave and let them have a fit. Because children like that that don't respect their teachers got no business in the classroom, setting a poor example before other children in that classroom. They'll be taken care of somewhere in the stockade later on or in the chain gang or in the penitentiary in the lecture chair. Now, you can't run down the schoolhouse and threaten to fight the teacher and bring up a, a, a case against them and drag them into court because they corrected your child. Your child probably needed correcting. And when you run down the schoolhouse and blow off and show how ignorant you are, and that child finds out you're going to stand by the child and believe the child and never consider the, the testimony of the teacher, then you're ruining that child. You know what I did if I got a whipping at school? And I got a few. My school teacher had some of the longest old King Hickory sitting over that corner you ever saw in your life. And once in a while I had to march down in front of the room and she'd take one and try it out. See how it sounded. Man, it sounded terrible to me. All right. And she'd give me a whipping. And I had some little brothers, and I tried to bribe them not to tell them when I got home because my daddy said, son, when you get a whipping in school, you're going to get one you get home. And that meant I got another when I got home. I got another whipping. And I maybe tell my little brothers, I said, listen, I'll give you a piece of chewing gum or when I get it, a piece of candy when I get some. If you want to tell mom and daddy got a whipping today, and they had uh, let on like, well, they weren't going to tell on me that day. And lo and behold, They'd uh, get home before I did, and, and uh, when I arrived home, uh, Dad said, well, son, you got a whipping day, didn't you? How'd you know, Dad? Well, uh, you got a whipping, all right. Uh, what'd you do? And I had to tell him, all right, come on out here behind the barn. And we'd go out in the, behind the barn, uh, where we, he gave the whippings, and he'd give me a good one. I always got two. If I got one at school, got another at home. It's not that way anymore. You let a child, if they got a whipping at school, then... And about two or three hours after he got home, here comes mom and daddy, red in the face, mad as the devil. Who do you whip my child for? My child didn't do that. He said he didn't do it. You're doing nothing in the world but ruining your child. You need to teach that child to respect that teacher, obey that teacher, respect parents, respect their pastor, respect the law enforcement officers, and respect those in authority. If not, you're going to raise up a bunch of roughnecks and wild J. Birds is going to get into trouble sooner or later down the road and go to a premature grave. Teach people respect uh, the elders, those that, that are uh, superior to them in a matter of age and so forth and a matter of position. Children need to be taught that from just a little child up. Be taught to respect. Now you need to teach your child to love God. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 6, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he'll not depart from it. The Bible says train that child up in the way he should go, and when he gets old, he won't depart from it in his old days. Now you need to realize there may be a time he might become a prodigal on the way up, but chances are you come back to the father's house pretty soon when he realizes it's the hog pen. Train him up in the way he should go, and when he grows older, he'll appreciate that, and you thank God for what you taught him. You ought to te teach him to attend church. One of the greatest things you can do for your child is carry them to good old fundamental Bible-believing church and let them sit there and hear the singing, let them hear the praying, hear the preaching, hear the teaching, and see you as you give in to the work of God and take them to church. Take them every Sunday you possibly can. You'd be glad you did. Uh, whenever they grow up and, and when you grow older. Teach them to give to the work of God. It's good to give a little child money to give uh, 
uh, an offering pan. On the way to church one day, a man gave his little boy two dimes. He said, Sonny boy, I'm going to give you a dime, get you an ice cream. I'm going to give you a dime to put in the collection plate today. Well, on the way to church, he dropped one of those dimes and went down in the drain. He couldn't find it. He said, Dad, I'm, I'm awfully sorry, sir. I dropped the, the Lord's dime, but I still got mine. Well, that's what happens sometimes. We need to put God first in our lives. Respect authority. You know, some children need to be devoted back from, chief, from uh, chiefs to back to Indians. Got too many chiefs now in our family. There's not enough Indians. There need to be a devotion in the home. Don't need uh, more than one chief in the home and let that be the dead. Teach them to pray. Teach them to sing. Teach the children to sing. Uh, give them uh, music if, you, if they uh, would like to take music. And uh, teach them to, to sing to the glory of God. You'll be glad you did as you grow older. Teach them to honor God and respect God. Yonder in the state of Virginia many years ago, there's a dear man that had one little boy. And uh, they, he's precious and they loved him. And we should love our children. You can't love your children too much. Love them, but don't love them to, uh, to the extent until they become selfish and petty and, and babyish until they never grow up. Love them, give them the right kind of love. If you need a whipping, give them a whipping. Because God said if you love them in the right way and like you should, you, you, you give them a whipping when they need it. My daddy wore a pair of suspenders, he wore a belt too. I'd, I often wondered why he wore both, but I found out later that he wore the suspenders to hold his pants up, and he wore that belt to hold us young'uns up. And he did a pretty good job. Now, whenever we need it, we need to get it. That's right, it's good medicine, good medicine to get a good whipping once in a while. My daddy said one time, son, don't you all go to that wash hole. Uh, we had a wash hole down the pasture and, and a little dangerous, I guess he thought for us children to go and we went anyway and when we got back, we didn't want to go back to the wash hole anytime soon unless daddy said it was all right. Now when we tell our children what to do, uh, they don't do it, that's the time to drop the hammer. That's the time to do something about it. Don't play around about it. Don't say, well, I'll tell you daddy when he gets home. Well, he knows you're going to forget about it before daddy gets home. And so just go right ahead and do what needs to be done. Now my mother, bless her hearts in heaven today, I always let her speak to me twice, but not my daddy. Mama told me something I could get by by letting her say it twice. But my daddy, when he said one time, that was law. That's the law of the Medes and Persians. Virgin, I want you to go do so and so. Yes, sir. He didn't have to tell me twice. No, sir. And your children will know whether or not you'll tell them twice or three times or keep on talking and do nothing about it. They know that. They learn that when they're toddlers. They learn that. And so we got to learn how to rear our children. Oh, Dr. Spock, they caused so many children to grow up and go to hell, probably be in hell itself one of these days, not they already, is wrecked and learned a lot of children. And a lot of people try to raise their children by a book. That's not but one book that you need to raise your youngest, and that's the Bible. You can't improve on that. You can go buy these books on child training, but the child psychologists, people try to tell you how to raise your youngins, don't have any of their own. People know how to raise youngins are those that's got youngins themselves. And some of these birds out here go to school and learn how to raise youngins and write a book, and you go buy it and say, I gotta see how to raise my youngins. Throw that thing in the garbage, can't get you a Bible. God will tell you how to raise your youngins in the Bible. That's the way it should be done. Now, I started to tell you about the man in Virginia. Uh, he had a precious little child, and uh, the great Dr. Bob Jones Sr. that's going on to be with God went up to run a meeting for him one time, and uh, this man was a graduate of Bob Jones University, and uh, they went by, the, we, we, the man, of course the pastor was a graduate, the man was his member, one of his deacons, and they rode by house one day, and, and this pastor said to Dr. Jones, said, Dr. Jones, let me tell you something happened there in that family, one of the saddest things I ever saw him alive. He said, uh, what is it? Uh, what happened? He said, well, they had no children, and they prayed that God would give them a child. And sure enough, God honored that prayer, and there came a little boy. The very spitting image of his daddy, as the old saying is, looked just like his daddy. They loved him. Daddy carried him with him every way he could and loved him dearly, and he's so precious. And when dad would drive into home from work, uh, the little boy would come and meet daddy at the entrance of the driveway and get in the car and ride on into the garage and he'd take him in his arms, hug him and kiss him, dad go in the house. One day he pulled up in the driveway and the little boy wasn't there. The dad said, now, 
he's probably asleep and I'll just drive on the, under the garage. And he sat down on the accelerator and, and uh, the car made a lunge. About the time the car made a lunge, the little boy jumped out behind the garage door and said, Boo, Daddy, and jumped right in front of that automobile and he ran over him. That man jumped out and picked that little boy up. His mouth was bleeding, bleeding to the nose. And the little fellow, before he lost consciousness, kissed his daddy as he carried him in the house. And daddy said, son, I didn't mean it if the little fellow died. Dr. Jones said, the preacher said, uh, doctor said, that's the saddest thing I've witnessed in my life. Said they brought that little white coffin in that church. And there's a beautiful little boy in there. And said that daddy came down the aisle. Said he picked up that little casket in his arms and he went up one aisle and down the other saying, son, daddy didn't mean to do it. Daddy wouldn't have done it for anything in the world, son, I'd have died for you. We loved you so much, son, daddy didn't mean to do it. And they had to literally take that man and hold him and take that little white casket and place it back on the table before we can continue on the funeral. He said, Dr. Jones, that was the saddest thing I've ever witnessed. He said, son, that's bad. I'm going to tell you something worse than that. He said, Preacher, what could it be? He said, for a man and a woman to bring little children into the world, never tell them about Jesus, never try to tell them right from wrong, never carry them to church, let them grow up in sin, and never try to warn them about evil, and let them grow up and die and go to hell, is far worse than a man accidentally run over his little son that he'll meet in heaven someday. And that's true. How precious are those darling children. God gave them to you. You need to love them. Need to correct them. Tell them right from wrong. Make them obey you. Don't play around about the thing. They know what you mean business or not. Mean business. They'll learn you mean business. And everything will be fine. You don't have to reach down, grab them by the leg under one pew and reach, grab them by the other leg under another pew and reach and grab them by the leg and chase them all around the in, inside of the church if they know you mean business. All you have to do to correct that is walk right out that door out there, take off your belt, and apply the Board of Education the seat of knowledge, and you soon get to the place where you won't be dragging out from other people and chasing them around in the auditorium. They are no better. It may take you a little time. They've gotten away with some of it probably. It may take you a little time to get the things squared away, but they know that you don't have to speak for one time, and then that's it. And God help us. We let our children get away with too much today. And that's why you have people today out on the streets breaking automobiles, raking in cars, knocking out windows, stealing, robbing, on dope, on whiskey. They had no training at home. Your training at home is where you must start at home. Train them at home. Don't wait for the school teacher to do it. Don't wait for the Sunday school teacher. Don't wait for the preacher to do it. Don't wait until they get in the penitentiary for it to be done. Start in the high chair. If by starting in the high chair, you keep them out of the electric chair. And that's the place to start. Now be loving and kind. Don't be, don't be cruel and mean and, uh, and overdo it. Use some common sense. But you got to train your child that you mean business. And when you speak, you mean what you say. That's not bad. That's, that's the correct thing to do. That's the right thing to do because they'll try you. They'll, they know they're going to see what they can get away with. And they're going to do it. They're going to try it and see if they can get away with it. And if you get away with it this time, they're going to do it again. Now, love them. Let them know you love them. A child's pitiful if his parents doesn't love him. Let them know you love them. Our children need love. Love them. And uh, then God will bless you and take care of you. In the penitentiary right today, and I'll close on, I'll tell you this. Up here in, in Tennessee a few years ago, you may have read about it. There's an old, wicked, ungodly, demon-possessed man. Had a little daughter, about five or six years old. She did something she shouldn't have done. Her mother went at home. And he made a run back and forth in the house until she almost gave out. She's begging for one. She said, Daddy, I, I, can't, I can't run no more. I'm, I'm give out, Daddy. I, I, Daddy, I won't do what I did no more. Please, Daddy, forgive me. I, I just can't run. He said, you keep running. Daddy, could I have some water? Instead of giving her water, he gave a little thing, some hot pepper. Uh